Yo, still bills, what's the deal? Man, I just dropped my daughter off at the motherfucking daycare. Heading to the plantation after a week and a half, man. Oh, I got used to not having to do this, man, but it's back to this bag. But peep game, man. We got some man, listen, man. I was in um when I was in LA, right? I came up on um I came up on this live stream. It was, you know, Kwame. I think it's, uh, I can't remember his last name, but his name is Kwame. He won't, he, um, he's an admin of one of the boxing pages on my Facebook page. My man Drico was in there. And they had, um, they had Bud's nephew Travion in there. And they had, uh, BFTB and Blu ray in there. I think that's his name, Blu ray. Uh, Spence's uh, strength and conditioning coach And there's this new narrative that has been formed That um, Bud took the easy route Because with him being an undisputed world champion He could have moved up and opted to fight uh, uh, um, He could have opted to fight Spence If he would have vacated his straps at 154 pounds and moved up now, from what I'm gathering, I don't too much know. I don't too much know, honestly. I didn't follow that that particular part of the story because the general consensus was honestly get a belt and we can talk. That was the, that was the general consensus. Spence told him get a belt and we can talk. So if he's telling him get a belt and we can talk, that means he has no interest in fighting him until he gets something in return. Like I, I I'm not gonna give you a shot at my title. But if you get a belt, you get somewhat even a playing field and we can talk. And from what I'm what I'm understanding is Spence was the IBF champion. And for Bud to get a shot at an IBF strap once he moved up, he would have needed to fight Sergey Lipinets as a mandatory. He would have he would have needed to honor that mandatory at 140. If he wanted that, if he wanted that opportunity to fight for that title once he moved up. That's not taking the easy route. And it, let's take it a step further. Nobody jumps up. Nobody with any sort of common sense jumps up and fights another champion. That's not just a regular champion, the top dog in the division. As an introduction into that division. That just isn't, that's not logical. Because you don't know if your power is going to translate. You don't know if your punch resistance is going to translate. You don't know if your reflexes and everything is going to translate into that higher division. You don't know. You don't got a clue. So you gradually move up. That's why I mean, people, that's why a lot of people, oh man, he, he walk around at 180. So because he walks around at 180, they think he can automatically fight at 175 because that's his walking around way. And it's like, eh, no. It's the reason why these fighters suck down as much as they possibly can and gradually move up to a more comfortable weight that they're more you know they're, that they're more prone to walking at walking around at because they want to make sure that everything that they're able to you know all their skill set their ability to take a well played shot the, god damn it man their you know their speed everything they want to make sure all of that shit remains intact once they move up it's a reason for that. And that's the reason. You don't want to just walk into a fight and be, or you don't want to just walk into a new division and you don't know if you're going to be able to fight at, comfortably at that division. You dig what I'm saying? Look at Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner was, you know what I'm saying, knocking niggas in the dirt at 140. By the time he got to 47, he couldn't compete up there with them top dogs. He couldn't. He could not. So why exactly would why is it why is it logical for Bud to jump up into a division and fight the top dog in Earl Spence? Spence isn't a career welterweight, but he's been at welterweight longer than he was at junior middleweight. So he's more than acclimated to the division. Jeff Horn wasn't never nobody. You know, that was, you know. Everybody knew what time it was with Jeff Horn. Like, all right, cool. That's e you know, that's easy pickings. That's why everybody was calling him out after he beat Man beat Manny Pacquiao. So, all right, cool. Yeah, you. I right, bet. Right, let me go up there and get this. Let me go get this money from Jeff Horn real quick. 
So he went up there and got that money from him. All right, cool. Now, what's good, Spence? It's wild how people can formulate any and every venture and avenue to go away from the fact that Spence telling this nigga, why not take the easy route? It's wild and crazy how everybody can formulate these ventures and these mindsets and these talking points about Bud, Duck, and Spence when they wouldn't even put Bud's name on a broadcast and his graphic on a broadcast when they were talking about top welterweights. I heard somebody say, oh man, it's promote, you're gonna, you're gonna promote, you know, you're gonna promote for the other company. It's not about that. It's not about that. Y'all can't have them both. Even though boxing is a business, we need to, you don't talk about the best fight and the best and you're not willing to, uh, 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 you're not willing, but you're willing to condone that type of fuckery. That's bogus. You know it was a reason why they wasn't putting that man's graphic or saying his name on PBC broadcast. It was a reason for that. Y'all know the reason for that. Like, what are we talking about? And then I heard him say, I heard the BFTB dude say, Spence is going to beat the shit that he's going to stop Bud because of the foot. Like, he has better footwork. Like, what, 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 what realm are you living in? That you would think that Spence has better feet and more educated feet than Bud. The ability of switch hit alone automatically puts him a step above Spence as far as footwork is concerned. When you watch the fight with him and Sean Porter, Bud, Spence never got any breathing room with Sean Porter. By the eighth round, Bud had established distance. He had fought him at from a comfortable range to where he could take that extra step back mid ring. He had enough room, we had more than enough room to operate mid-ring where he could take that extra step back and time him coming in. That's how he dropped him with that uppercut late in the fight. And eventually went on to stop him. Footwork. He gets bull rushed to the rope and gets, you know, uh, 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 get rushed out of position. All right, cool. The minute my back touches the rope, I'm going to spin out back to the middle of the ring. Cutting angles. That's all footwork. Spence didn't give us none of that against Sean Porter. He gave us none of that against Porter. He fought, He had no other choice but to stand in the pocket and bang with Sean Porter. He wasn't able to give us footwork because he doesn't have it on that level. People kill me like... Spence gained the no. This the, he he was able to get, you know gain his reputation as this incredible outbox because of what he was able to do to Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is way smaller than Spence. Mikey Garcia never even fought at one four seven. You're gonna look like that with inadequate competition. Mikey Garcia is a really good boxer, but he wasn't. He's not built for hundred. He's not built for welterweight. He's not. Let alone going and fighting Spence as the first fight in the division. No. Spence went in there and did what it is that he was supposed to do. Keeps it a stack. I haven't even watched that fight. And they said Mikey Garcia was a motherfucking combo dummy. So you could do whatever it is you want to do when you don't have an opponent in front of you that's going to give you the, no type of resistance. And because of that, and even with Lamont Peterson, man, Lamont Peterson was a complete shell of himself. I'm not mad that he, you know, I, I'm not... I won't denigrate a win for you know his win over Lamont Peterson, man. But when you know, it's time you it's a time to start unpacking shit as well. That wasn't the same Lamont Peterson that fought Danny Garcia, and that's cool. That's cool. You're not gonna get like like I said when you're on the come up, of, you know, fighters that you were gonna get are just gonna be so happen to regress because they've had a long a more lengthier career than you. They've been in more wars than you. So certain names you're gonna get that's going to make your resume, that's going to enhance your resume, on name alone. Even though they may not be a, be you know they may not be at the level of skill that they once were, they still have that buzz around the you know around the division and around boxing hardcores that oh yeah cool that's a good that's a recognizable name. That's what that is. And niggas is really talking, but like, no, bro. I, I, I don't get mad that he beat, that he fought Lamont Peterson. I'm going to denigrate him for that win because he went in there and did what the fuck he was supposed to do. But it is, a, you know, you do have to unpack that. You do have to unpack that a little bit more. And 
you dig me? So when we talk about footwork, Spence isn't on the level of Bud when it comes to feet. And it's not even close. Like y'all see whatever the fuck it is y'all wanna see. I don't understand. Well, you, you can take, triangle theories don't work, but you can take a common opponent and use, you know, take the pros and cons from that common opponent. In this situation, Sean Porter. I'm seeing people talk about after after I watch Bud fought, uh, fight Sean Porter, I know that Spence would beat him. Even though Bud stopped him. Even though he had a far more difficult time against Bud than he did with Sean Porter. He feels he won that fight. Uh, uh, uh. Not Sean Porter, but Earl Spence. Sean Porter feels he won that fight against Earl Spence. He knows what time it was with Bud. I don't know what niggas be talking about, man. Any way to show Bud or PBC type uh, representatives in a positive light, that shit is whack. Spence... He duck Bud. There's just no other way around it. Even his trainer, oh man, you know that fight ain't ready. You know Bud got to do more, more. Uh, what, what, more of what? More of what? He's a former fucking undisputed world champion, dog. Like he's far more accomplished than Spence. Why? What more does he have to do? That's the thing, man. That's what my biggest beef with the PBC is. More is gimmicky over there they want the the the, the uh, uh you know the you know glitz and glamour and social media popularity man they want all that bullshit as opposed to just getting in the ring and fighting the best if it isn't as lucrative as it could possibly be then they, oh no i don't want to fight bud and spence is the fight that people have been clamoring for since before he spence was a champion and before bud was in the division they usurped, they, those two names alone usurped Thurman, who was the top dog in that division on that side of the street. You're not about to sit here and tell me that Bud needs to do everything, you know, goes, goes to infinity and beyond and do that much more to garner a fight and deserve a fight with Spence. It's bullshit. That's bullshit. Them niggas just don't want no drama. They don't. And from what niggas is saying, if, if with that, like, you know, I've seen a few, quite a few people say this, because I just, I didn't know it. In order for Spence to, if, in order for Bud to qualify as a mandatory for that type, for an IBF title, the, main, the same title that Spence was holding, he would have had to honor the mandatory in Sergey Lipinets. If that's the, if that's an absolute fact, then I don't want to hear shit else. And they keep talking about send the contracts, send the contract. B, he was saying that, send the contracts, send the contracts, send the contract. What are you asking for in it? You never gave us a definitive number that you told you that you said you sent Bob. Bob know that number. Bob know that number. We sent him. All right, cool. Well, what's the number? Thurman was saying 10 M's. Y'all don't make more money than Bud. Then there we go counting pockets again. I hate you having to be the nigga to do that shit, but goddamn. Y'all don't make more than Bud. Y'all know that. You PBC fighters do not make more than but that nigga gets a guaranteed four. Y'all getting guaranteed two. If I'm not mistaken. You get, you know, you're more known to the public. And it's not even the public on that type of scale. More people know you than they know Bud. But it's you ain't no goddamn Canelo. You wasn't no, you ain't even no Miguel Cotto. You're, you're none of that. Y'all keep trying to talk about numbers, bro. Like, Spence is not a successful pay-per-view attraction like that. He's not. We fresh out of an era where niggas was averaging 500K. Averaging. I think Manny did what Spence did in his fight with Danny Garcia. I think he did that with goddamn Ugas. Don't talk to me about this dude being this wild pay-per-view attraction and that support. No. Oh, the A-side, the A-side, the A-side. I'm tired of that shit, man. At this point, I used to, like I said, I used to argue that Spence, that Bud should take that 60-40 and just get the fight out of the way. 
Fuck all that now Because you niggas is acting like some busters Y'all can't even be objective with it Y'all co-signed 70-30 Y'all had no it Y'all was repeating all that bullshit 80-20 Y'all was repeating all that shit Y'all didn't once come out of what you know come out of the uh, 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 come out of that mindset. They say, "Come on, man, that shit is corny." Y'all took y'all took that and ran with it. No, Bud should not. At this point, Bud should, it should be 50-50. Bud is far more accomplished. <laughs> He's far more accomplished than Earl Spence. He's far more accomplished, and he's better. It's just as simple as that. Spence just so happens to have a couple of he has a, you know he has a couple of good names on his resume. He has one more good name on his resume, and that's Danny Garcia. That's about it. That's about it. He got the better version of Kell Brook. I'll give him that. He got the better version of Kell Brook. You can have that. Both of their common opponents, Bud stopped. Bud stopped the uh, Bud got the you know the more regressed version of Kell Brook. Yeah, he, he so he stopped him faster. They both got a Sean Porter. Bud stopped him. Spence didn't. Spence struggled a lot more than with Bud struggled. They stopped that fucking bullshit, man. Like you niggas are some bozos with this shit. And it's annoying. There's no sense of object you know objectivity. Who, what we you know what you do I'm born and raised in North Omaha man y'all niggas is talking I, I could be objective when it comes to bud y'all can't and this shit is it, it, ugh bud ain't duck no spence it's on record with spence ducking bud anybody saying opposite is on some bullshit <laughs>